Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the 5% series where we hope to try and get you to finish in the top 5% globally if you follow these instructions. That means if you're in a mini league of maybe 20 or fewer teams, you've got a reasonably good chance of finishing either at the top or very near the top. We start by looking at how last week could have gone with the players you picked and then what the suggestions are for the coming week. Now, when we look at the players, I'm assuming a 4-4-2 formation. I realise a lot of us didn't play 4-4-2. It's just for the sake of seeing the sort of scores we could have got. So starting with the keepers, you'd have had one of these playing. Onana for 9, Johnston for 6, Edison for 6, Ramsdale for 2, Flecken for 2, Pickford for 2, Turner for 2. Pickford was unlucky. Unlucky that his defence was so bad. Pickford should have got a clean sheet, really. I'm saying that because I played Pickford. So anyway, you'd have got a minimum of two points for your keeper, maximum of nine. The average was 4.1. With the defenders, I'm assuming two of these were playing for you. A Stupin and seven, Chilwell seven, a Kanji six, Shaw five, James two, Trippier two, Trent one, and Stones didn't play. And we don't know whether Stones are going to be playing this coming game week or not, but we'll get to that later. So you'd have got a minimum of three for these two defenders and a maximum of 14, average of 8.6. The second page of defenders, we had Saliba for five, Botman five, Colwell two, Bulldog two, Gabriel one, Pinnock one, Bayer one, Porro didn't play. So that's an average of 4.8, minimum two, maximum 10. The midfielders, the first page of midfielders, two of these. Saka for 10, Madison 9, Martinelli 5, Salah 5, Rashford 3, Fernandez 3, Odegaard 2, and KDB who went off injured. We'll get to him later. So that was a maximum of 19 points from two of these, minimum 3, average of 9.6. Regarding the second page of midfielders, Embuemo 7, Mitama 5, Eze 3, Lerma 3, Casemiro 3, I've spelt him right this week I think, Sterling 2, Nakamba 2, Gibbs White 2. That's an average of 6.8, minimum 4, maximum 12. Regarding the strikers, first page I'm assuming one of Haaland for 13, Watkins 5, Wilson 5, Jackson 1, Darwin 1, Kane didn't play and of course he's off now. Obviously most of us may have had more than one of these from these page, I know I did, but this is just to work out the average scores. So it's an average of 5 for this striker, minimum 1, maximum 13. And in the second page of forwards, we have Wissa for 9, Pedro 7, Solanke 7, Adibayo 2, Mubama didn't play. They had an average of 6.3. Now, I've not yet done the next page that shows how it compares to the global average, but the global average for game week 1 was in fact 64. If you'd picked the worst players from this system, you'd have got 20 points. The average was 53 and the best was 99. Well, that's just from the way I present it. Of course, the numbers would actually be slightly different to that. And the average of 53 for this system, which is below 64, assumes you didn't captain Haaland. But of course, most people hopefully did captain Haaland. So the people I'm aware of that are following the system, they all comfortably got above the global average of 64. Now, if we look at this coming game week two, what the suggestions are, I'm going to look at each position. Your goalkeepers are Edison, Ramsdale, Inanna, Flecken, Johnston, Pickford and Turner. I see no reason to move any of these about. There's no new players being added in this week. I think whoever you've got, you just play them and we'll get to the benching order shortly. Regarding the first page of defenders, Trent has got a very nice game at home to Bournemouth. It's going to be very interesting to see how he does over the next few weeks. But he has a chance, if you've got him... Of getting a good score. If you don't have him, I wouldn't try and get him in, but if you've got him, I'd keep hold of him. Trippier, okay, he's way to Man City, but he could get an assist, he could get a goal, remote chance of a clean sheet. It wouldn't bother me if I had him. I would still be playing him, I think, but uh, it is way to Man City. Chilwell, now I've made him a green card. That means if you're trying to think what to do and you have reason to move a defender on, Chilwell would be a very good defender to get in. They're away to West Ham this coming week, but then they're at home to Luton and at home to Forest, and he's already gone up slightly in price. Then we have James. Stones is a tricky one. If he plays, if he's fit and plays, then he's fine to have. He's at home to Newcastle, then home to 
Sheffield United home to Fulham. I've marked him as orange, which means he's okay to sell. So if you wanted to swap stones for Chilwell and you could afford to, that's an okay move. But if you want to keep hold of stones, that's fine. Hopefully he'll either play 90 minutes or not at all, if you hold on to him. What would I do? I think if I had stones and I could afford to go to Chilwell, I would be tempted. Now this early on in the season, it is okay to shuffle your teams around. If you have to take a minus four, that is okay, because we're only going for the top 5%. So don't need to worry about that. And also every year, the first two, three, four game weeks, we learn different things about the players, who's playing in which position. There are always surprises. So we should expect the team we start with could well change within the first few weeks. And then Shaw's away to Tottenham, stupid and away to Wolves, the Candies at home to Newcastle, assuming he plays. Second page of defenders, we have Saliba, Gabriel, who came on and got one point, which is unfortunate. Poro didn't play at all. I've marked him as orange. He's okay to sell. He is a good player. He could be very attacking, but we don't know for sure yet what the setup's going to be with Spurs. So if I had him, I wouldn't be desperate to sell him. But if there's some swapping around of players you want to do and you do have him, you could let him go. I probably wouldn't take a minus four to move him on. Now, they are playing Man United this week, but they have some okay fixtures coming up. So Poro is a bit of an unknown. And then Pinnock, we have Colwell, Botman, Bayer and Bulldog. Bayer's not playing at all because his game against Luton was postponed. But these are the cheaper defenders anyway. Regarding the midfielders, Salah, marked him as green. He's at home to Bournemouth. It's not worth breaking your team to get Salah in. But if it happens that you're going to make one or two transfers and it's easy to get him because you have to sell an expensive player, then... He's all right to get. He's quite good. I've got him, so uh, I might be a little bit biased there. Who knows? KDB, he's out injured, expected to be out for several months. If you have him, sell him. That's why he's red. So, for example, if you've got Kevin De Bruyne, you could top him for Salah if you can find another couple of million somewhere else. Uh, Rashford home away to Tottenham. Arsenal away to Palace. Odegaard away to Palace. Fernandez away to Tottenham. Martinelli away to Palace. Madison of Marks is yellow, meaning he's good to buy. I wouldn't break my team to get him in, but for example, if you had De Bruyne, you could sell De Bruyne and get Madison. It frees up some cash. You could then get Chilwell for a lesser player if you wanted to. Regarding the second page of midfielders, we have Sterling, Mitama, Embremo, Eze, Gibbs White, Casemiro, Lerma, and Nakamba. And Nakamba's not playing. <laughs> the game got postponed. Regarding the forwards, Haaland marks as green. If you don't have Haaland, you should seriously consider getting him in, even if it means breaking your team. Now, you don't have to, and I wouldn't sell Salah to get Haaland in, and hopefully you do have Haaland, but you may not. But he's absolutely green, worth getting in. Kane, if you've got Kane, he's left, sell him. And we have Watkins, Wilson. Now, Darwin's a funny one. Liverpool are at home to Bournemouth this week. If Darwin gets a good amount of minutes, he could get a very big score. But he may just come on for a few minutes or he may sit on the bench. So I've marked him as orange. If you want to sell him, that's fine. Maybe you can use the money to get someone better. But I wouldn't be desperate to sell him because he's at home to Bournemouth. I would probably give him one more week if I had him. And then if he doesn't play enough minutes or doesn't do well enough, then I'd ship him out. And we have Jackson for Chelsea. Jackson looks very good, even though I think he only got one point. Second page of forwards, we have Solanke, Wissa, Yao Pedro, Eddie Baios not playing, and Mubama. Now we look at the bench order. First we look at the keepers. The first keeper you see that you've got goes on your bench. So for example, if you have Johnston, I'm suggesting you put him on your bench. Now all these benching options, by the way, and the captains when we get to them, are just suggestions. If you've got some news that I don't have at the moment, or you know something I don't know, or you've just got a preference, just do what you want on the bench. This is just a suggestion. But if you've got Johnson, or well, he's playing Arsenal, I'd have him on the bench. If you haven't got him, but you've got Pickford, he's on the bench. If you have neither of those, but you have Flecken, he's on your bench. And then it would be Turner, and then Onana, then Ramsdale, then Edison. So I realise that Turner is at home to Sheffield United, while Onana is away to Tottenham. But Man United are a better side. And I think generally you want to play the players from the better teams. 
I'm now going to show you most of the rest of your players and my suggested benching order, but do whatever you like. The first player you see that you have goes in position number three on your bench, the next one position two, the next one position one, but of course you can't have three from the same position on the bench. So it starts off with Kane, De Bruyne, Nakamba, Adibayo and Bayou. None of those are even playing this week. So they're easy, they're on your bench. I've actually got two of those. <laughs> I only have one person on my bench this coming week. Then I'm saying Mubama, then Perro for Spurs, Botman, Bulldog, Lerma, Colwell, Solanke. So we're starting to get into players that are actually quite nice to be playing. Pinnock, Casemiro, Wissa, Trippier, Eze, Gibbs White, Shaw, Mbremo, Gabriel, Saliba, Wilson, Darwin. James, Chilwell, Stones. The reason I've got Stones so high is if he starts and plays, he's worth playing. What we don't want, of course, is for Stones to come on for a few minutes or to start a few minutes and then go off. So if you have Stones and you want to put him lower, that's absolutely fine. And it may be when we get near the deadline, we may have some more news regarding Stones. Kanji, Sterling, Stupinan, Matoma, Jao Pedro and Jackson. Now, I think you're all going to have at least three of these players, so I think that should be your bench sorted. Regarding captaincy, now it's interesting this week. There are two obvious captains. That's going to be Haaland and Salah. I'm suggesting if you've got one of these, you put the captain's hat on them. The problem is, what do you do if you have both? Now, if you're just playing against people in your mini league and there's a fair number of them that have Salah or Salah and Haaland, it's probably worth captaining Salah because he's expected to get more points. However, if not many people in your mini league have Salah, the safer choice is to go for Haaland because all those other players will be choosing Haaland. And if Haaland outscores Salah and you captain Salah, then you're going to fall a long way behind. So in summary, if the people you're up against, if a lot of them have Salah, captain Salah, or... If you just want to play of the odds and thinks Salah's going to do better and he's expected to do better, you captain Salah. If you want to play it safe, I think you have to captain Haaland. If you have neither of those two, then Watkins or Trent are both interesting choices for captaincy. If you don't have either of those, then Rashford and Fernandez they may do something away to Spurs. So I'd suggest make one of these captains one of these vice captains. If you don't have any of these or you don't have two of these, then I'd suggest probably pick your most expensive midfielder you've got less as your next captain or a striker. One of those would be okay. I wouldn't choose a defender or a keeper. I hope that all made sense and was easy enough to follow. And if you are following this and you feel like it and you don't mind people knowing, please do uh, type in your number in the comments, your team number, so that we can see how you're doing. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.